Voice Flow just received one of the biggest updates that would completely flip the entire AI chatbot landscape. So in this video, I will take you through step by step how to take advantage of this update and implement this in your AI chatbot today. And if you are already using Voice Flow, you can follow along and know exactly what to change in your current project so they are no longer updated. So I actually subscribed to the Voice Flow email. That's actually how I know about this. So if you just look at the email, so important update, migrating your AI response and steps, set steps into the new prompt step, right? So it basically say, hi there, there's an important update to your platform. So for ongoing commitment to enhancing experience, we have made the decision to deprecate the AI response and AI steps. Brother, let me tell you, this is how big this is. Like, I want you guys by the end of the video to actually appreciate how big of an impact it has, right? So if you have used voice flow before, you probably know how annoying AI response and AI set steps are. They are good for doing very specific tasks. They're very good at doing robotic automation, essentially, but they are very bad, or at the very best, med mediocre at being an actual AI agent because the, the prompting just sucks. Like, there's literally no way for us to actually control the prompting that that well and everything just seems super robotic and just very constrained and rigid within voice flow that's why like platforms like agentive exist by the way it's because they have that kind of flexibility when you're just using the actual assistant api you know it allows more interactivity between the user and the chatbot and this feels super traditional chatbot at the moment it feels so rigid but on February 4th, 2025, the AI response and AI set steps will be disabled from the step two bar in the voice flow interface. This will be, they will disappear next month, guys, next month, remember. And on June 3rd, 2025, these steps will no longer be supported. And instead, we'll be using a new prompt and set steps. Oh, let me tell you how much better it is. God, this is such a huge thing. And remember, guys, if you already have response and set AI steps in your current project, remember to delete them. Like, not delete them, but replace them with prompt and set steps. I'm super excited to actually show you guys what the new steps are. So without further ado, let's head to the voice flow interface. But before we begin this video, my name is Edwin. I'm the founder of Legacy AI, alongside my friend Champion here. That's his real name, by the way. And together we offer voice-based and text-based AI solutions like the one you're seeing in this video to other businesses to help them save hours and hours of time and thousands of dollars spent on manual service tasks such as appointment scheduling, CRM integration, lead generation, etc. And if you're a business owner and you're interested to see how these AI solutions can help transform your business and improve your bottom line, follow the link in the description to book a free consultation call with us today. Anyway, back to the video. Okay guys, so we're in the voice flow interface and what I've done is gone ahead and built a really, really simple email verifier to basically say, if the user's input email is valid or not, if it's valid, just output valid. If it's invalid, just output invalid, right? Very simple. But the whole point is really to, just to show you guys, traditionally what you do, if you're familiar with the voice flow pl platform, is that you will need to use response AI or set AI to do this, right? So you would have the user's reply to last utterance, and then it will go through the response AI block, right? And then you will have to choose between AI model and knowledge base. And for those of you who probably know, knowledge base sucks, but I will talk about knowledge base later. Let's talk about the AI model first, where usually you will have the system prompt here. You can't really type much. You can just write a really simple system prompt, and then you just change the temperature and tokens and choose the model. And here, you, yeah, you add some users from where you just add some instructions in here. But overall, I think most of you can agree that this response AI is very limited. There's not much you can control. And the way that you prompt doesn't really shine through these response AI blocks, right? Right. So after this response AI, it then go overhead. So because this response AI returns valid, if valid, return invalid, if invalid, right? So if it's valid, then we set up a condition. So an if condition here, right, the condition. So if last response is valid, then we just end the conversation. Well, usually you would just capture it. You would send it over to something like Airtable, for example, to essentially 
have a lead generation uh, CRM integration, right? Oh, watch this video, by the way, if you want to find out exactly how you would connect from VoiceFlow to Airtable to capture more leads. Um, I've done a one hour tutorial on this. But anyway, I will not go over here because that's not the point of the video. And if it's an email is not valid, then we tell the user to enter the email again, right? So far, so good. So this is how the old response AI, like this is what you would do when in the old response AI, right? Similarly, you can do something similar with set AI, right? You can just literally copy the same prompt here, apply to, and then, sorry, and then you would just have the system prompt, the same thing, like you can just copy his, copy this, and then from here, and set AI, instead of returning a response, you basically set the response from the AI to a variable, right? So you traditionally, you would do something like create a new variable called valid, right? For example, apply to valid, so, and then you just put it in this block, right? So if it's valid, if the, if the variable valid, it's valid. Sorry, this is very bad naming, but you get the point. If the variable valid is valid, the actual response is valid, then we end the conversation. If the variable is invalid, then we ask the user into the email again, right? So, so far, so good. This is what you do traditionally. But now you can use something called the prom block. So let me go ahead and do I disconnect this first. And let me just put this here. And as usual, you just save the user reply to last utterance, and then the last utterance will go through something called the prompt block. So guys, if you want to do the prompt block, you go ahead and go from talk, and you go to prompt, you drag it here, and then you'll have the prompt block, right? So within the prompt block, um, you can, VoiceFlow actually has some templates, so you have answer questions, and you have some beginner template that you can choose from within VoiceFlow, but I've gone ahead and actually make my own prompt, which is, do I just get edit prompt? This is the interface that you will see. See how much more clean everything is? And from here, you can just write your system prompt. I just write, you're an expert at validating emails. Your role is to classify the emails as valid or invalid. And the email must contain add and a domain at the end, right? If it doesn't, and it doesn't have a domain and doesn't have an add, it's not valid. If the email is valid, respond with valid, right? If it's valid, you do invalid, right? You, you get the point. That's not the best prompt that I've done. This is just a literally two minute prompt that I come up with like in less than a minute. So like, obviously you can refine it better, but the point is to show you that you have so much more freedom to basically just write a whole essay if you want. And you can use tools like Relevance AI, if you, don't, if you didn't know, Relevance AI is super good at, you can create your own kind of prompt perfect to to generate prompts right and if you want me to cover prompt engineering let me know in the comments and i will cover that but basically you have the system prompt and you can now add your own conversation history which is this vf memory and you can now add guys few short prompting in prompt log it, you can now basically add a qa basically an example input output pair and for those who no prompt engineering. You know, this is basically a future prompting. You basically give examples of the ideal input and the ideal output. So in this case, one of the examples that you can give is by one, two, three, this at gmail.com. And you can basically let the AI know the agent should respond invalid because this is not, this is not a valid email. Where in this case, this is obviously a valid email and the agent will reply for it. So the way you do it is basically add, add message pair, and then you basically have a user, user, and an agent response. So you can have this input, output, user, agent, user, agent, user, agent, user, agent pair that can basically serve as uh, future prompting, right? So if I just delete that. And basically, oh, and one thing that you should know is that the last user message should always be last utterance, right? Because that's basically the question that we're asking the AI, right? And then from here, you can go to settings and you can change the model, right? And you can just do the temperature, max tokens. There's nothing too surprising. That's what we used to be able to do as well. So that part is not too... So if we go to variables now, you can just test run, right? So if I test it now, at one, two, three, at gmail.com, you click run. 
is that valid? Not only that, you can not only it's much cleaner and much more control over the prompting in the in the prompt block. You can also now test the latency and tokens, guys. I'm telling you now, you can now test the latency and the amount of tokens that you've used in voice flow. So you can do stuff when you're doing client work, guys, for AI automation. You, first of all, you you need to know how much it costs. So how much token is going to cost to run per message. Now you don't need to calculate. You know exactly how much input token and exactly how much output token that you've used, right? And the second thing you need to consider is latency. Basically, how long it will take from basically one end to another, right? So like from the input, the moment that the user enters the message to where they receive a reply from the chatbot, how long is it going to take? So obviously we want the latency to be as low as possible, right? So that takes 0.22 seconds. And from here, you can now actually do proper testing within voice flow. So now you can play around with different settings and variables. So like if I do this, if I adjust a different model, for example, Claude, and now I click run again, right? And then I just click one, two, three, right? And then click run. And we'll see how, lo how much longer it would take. Uh, that seems to be taking a ridiculously long amount of time for... See? <laughs> See? That's exactly what I meant. It uses 651 tokens and latency is 9.83 seconds, but this is not doing what we want it to do because we clearly state that we want we only want to respond with valid and invalid, but it, gives an, it basically gives us an entire paragraph explaining what the hell is going on so that's probably a model setting see i just did it live so basically but explaining to you guys that by changing the different models this is just an example you can change the model you can change the settings you can change the prompt by changing these things you can test the results on the cost and latency so you can engineer your prompt you can engineer your model and you can engineer your settings to give the lowest latency and the lowest cost, guys. This is huge. So, yeah, so it would just go through the same thing, the conditioner, the if condition, and it will end, right? But one thing I do want to show you guys is the set variable. So, you know, before we talk about, like, instead of response AI, you can do set AI. You can do the same thing now, but instead of, Going to say AI, you what you do is you go to logic, set, drag it. Now, most of you are probably familiar with the set value of expression, right? But they have now added a set prompt option. So if you click that and you can go ahead and select the prompt or you create your own prompt, I'll just use the email verifier. And now you can apply the output that comes from the prompt and save the response. So save the entire response from the AI to a variable. So let's just call it email ferry right so it's this so this set block this new set block basically does the same thing with this prompt block but instead of outputting it you can this is basic the set block saves the entire response to a, a variable and you can just pass this on to this now basically of course you need to change last response but change it to email verifier but it's basically does the same thing. So this is the prompt and the set block. Now, another thing, one last thing I do want to mention is the knowledge base. So traditionally, as you probably know, this is the knowledge base that you're stuck with in VoiceFlow. You need to answer some query and some introductions, and there's not really not much you can do. This is the only two things you can add to your knowledge base. So it's, it's incredibly annoying how few control you have with knowledge base. Like it sucks so much with the current knowledge base that you have to use some external custom knowledge base platforms, basically. You cannot be using response AI to actually deal with any meaningful amount of knowledge base. Like if you have a large amount of information, if you have loads of PDF, this is not something that you can do in voice flow. But now, you actually, we actually have a whole KB search block now. So if you just go to def, that click def, and then you just click KB search, you just drag it. Now you have an entire KB search block, right? I'll just leave that because I already created one. So in here, you can now, you can enter the question, which is obviously going to be last utterance, the question set by the user. And now you can save the chunks to a variable. So let's just call it 
chunks one, right? You can save the chunks. For, for, for those of you who didn't know, the way that knowledge-based search works is that when a user asks a question, like a query, it basically sends that query to the AI and the AI will do something called vector search. Don't worry too much about it. it what it does is basically, think of it as basically searching through the knowledge base and finding chunks of information that are most relevant to the user's queries, right? And because obviously when you have 10 PDFs, 10 documents, it's not going to go through the entire document at once. So what Voiceflow and many LLM does is it basically divide the entire document into different chunks, into different sections. Um, this is not specific to LLM, but it's something to do with what we call retrieval augmented response. No, generation, sorry. It's called RAC in short. If you want more information, go look it up, but I don't want to get too technical here. It's basically something called RAC, but you just divide the document into different sections. And now you can have so much more control over the chunk limit, right? So I can, choose, I can choose the maximum chunks to consider is four, for example, right? And so the four most relevant chunks will be generated. See how much more control you have? And the amazing thing about this, guys, is that you can combine the KB search and the prompt block. So now you really have a, such a tailored and dynamic response through the custom knowledge base now. Because once you've done these, then you can use the prompt block to basically just add a prompt saying, hey, can you, based using the knowledge base search results, um, using that, using these knowledge, can you now answer the user's question? Because now it will generate such a much more accurate and a much more dynamic response to the user's questions. So that's all I actually want to cover in this video. I hope you guys are excited as I am about this new update. I know it doesn't seem that much, but like, trust me, it's a big deal. And for now, you definitely want to replace all your response and set AI blocks to prompt blocks and set blocks. And you will want to update your knowledge base search from the response AI knowledge base to the KB search block and start combining KB search block and the prompt block, right? This is huge. This is, I'm, I'm doing this in my projects as well, right? To my current clients. So definitely do this in your, in your projects. So I hope this video helps you guys. Um, I hope that gives you an updated insight or news of what has happened in the past 24 hours. By the time this video has come out, it might have been 48 hours. But yeah, I hope you guys find this video useful and you've enjoyed this kind of content and you want me to do more of these tutorials. Remember to like and subscribe to this channel and comment below what kind of builds or tutorials you want me to go through. And if you want me to see me struggle, you can go watch these AI or five minute AI automation challenge that I've done where I basically time myself to within five minutes to do some kind of basic AI automation builds. But I hope this video has been useful and that's it from me guys. And yeah, go ahead and play with Voiceflow. Have a good one.